was the night before Christmas with all things a bustle. As Mama got set for the Christmas Eve tussle, aunts, uncles, and cousins would soon be arriving with stomachs all ready for Christmas Eve dining. While I sat alone with a feeling of dread as visions of loot fisk danced in my head, the thought of the smell made my eyeballs start burning. The thought of the taste set my stomach to churning. For I'm one of those who could sweet rebuff, a Scandahoovian boy who can't stand the stuff. Each year, however, I played at the game to spare Mama and Papa the undying shame. I must bear up bravely. I can't take the risk of relatives knowing I hate Lutfisk. I know they would spurn me, my presence withhold, if the unthinkable, unspeakable truth they were told. Then out in the yard I heard such a clatter. I jumped up to see just what was the matter. There in the snow, all in a yumble, three of my uncles had taken a tumble. My aunts, as usual, gave them what for, and soon they were up and through the door. Then with talk and more cheer, an hour was passed, as Mama finished the Christmas repast. From out in the kitchen, an odor came stealing, that fairly set my senses to reeling. The smell of Lutefis creeped down the hall, and wilted a plant in a pot on the wall. The others reacted as though they were smitten, while the aroma laid low my small, helpless kitten. Uncle Oscar and Lars said, Oh, that smells yummy. And Kermit's eyes glittered while he patted his tummy. The scent skipped off the ceiling and bounced off the door, and the bird in the cuckoo clock fell on the floor. Mama announced the dinner by ringing the bell. They pushed to the table with a yump and a yell. I lifted my eyes to heaven inside, and a rose on the wallpaper withered and died. With wooden legs I found my chair, and sat in silence with an unseeing stare. Most of the food was already in place. There remained only to fill the loot fisk's place. Then Mama came proudly with a bowl on a trivet. You would have thought the crown jewels were in it. She placed it carefully down and took her seat. And Papa said grace before we could eat. It seemed to me with my whirling head, the shortest prayer he had ever said. Then Mama lifted the cover of that steaming dish, and I was face to face with that quivering fish. Me first, I heard Uncle Kermit call, while I watched the paint peel off the wall. The plates were passed for Papa to fill. I waited in agony between fever and chill. He would dip in the spoon and hold it up high. As it oozed onto the plates, I thought I would die. Then came my plate into my feverish brain. There seemed enough loot fist to derail a train. It looked like a mountain of congealing glue, oddly transparent yet discolored the hue. With butter and cream sauce, I tried to conceal it. I salted and peppered, but the smell still revealed it. I drummed up my courage. I tried to be bold. Mama reminds me, eat before it gets cold. I decided to face it. Oofta, I sighed. Oofta, indeed, my stomach replied. Then I summoned that resolve for which every breed is known. My hand took the fork as with mind of its own, and with reckless abandon that loot fisk I ate. Within twenty seconds, I cleaned up my plate. <laughs> Uncle Kermit flashed me an ear-to-ear -ear grin as butter and cream sauce dripped from his chin. Then to my great shock, he whispered in my ear, I'm sure glad this is over for another year. It was then I learned a great and wonderful truth that Swedes and Norwegians from old men to youth must each pay their dues to have the great joy of being known as a good Scandahoovian boy. And so to you all, as you face the great test, happy Christmas to you, and to you all the best. Yeah,